thanks everyone for coming. <laughs> um, and thanks for having me here as well. Um, it's been such a pleasure this month. So. Uh, today I'm just going to take you through two bodies of work. The one thing that I'm quite interested in is um, mark making and the relationship between <coughs> stitching and drawing and um, how working through different mediums, thinking about a particular technique, what, what happens in that kind of space. These works are particularly difficult to um, photograph, but the drawings and um, they're part of my honours body of work where I was looking at um, Aboriginal basketry and trying to work out my relationship to these techniques and, and how the um, history of Australia and textiles in Australia is so embedded with um, a lot of Aboriginal learning techniques and how then we carry on these traditions. So these are pencil drawings um, on paper, and there's a series of seven. And there are other little studies that went alongside those works. Um, and it was this connection between the threads, the layers of threads that were built up from these baskets that I was particularly interested in translating them into drawings and into stitches and they became um, large scale um, sort of more installation pieces. So the image in this work is a basket that I made in a workshop with some women um, from Gapawiak in the Northern Territory and well half a basket when <laughs> I didn't finish it. But um, then I scanned the basket and um, and then drawn and stitched where the basket, the image of the basket the name was um, And that one was using a French nodding technique and it cast some really interesting shadows on the wall. I like the relationship between um, the way you can use stitches where they have a surface image and then you know what happens on the other side of the cloth, the projection or the, the uh, shadow that's cast is very different. So you get kind of like a couple of images, a couple of lines. Um, so just after my uh, honours year finished, I had a house fire and I lost my studio. And so the work for my masters has come from that experience. And I continued working with scanning and this was one of the first pieces that I made which was um, a small piece of linen that I embroidered every day and then I scanned it in all different formations and then marked the days of December that followed after the fire. So I was kind of quite interested in um, the scanning technique for me is about this point of contact between something that's made and an image. Um, and the, the sharpness that you get in that very specific point and then everything else is kind of really blurry and, and hard to, to determine. Um, I, I find that it, it presents a quite interesting interpretation of the thing that's been scanned. Um, and for this one I was using the threads to help me get the, the images aligned and then I decided that I'd leave them in there because they were kind of messy. Um, and this was another series that was working with uh, just a remnant of silk that I'd started stitching in and then I gave up. And then I'd scanned it in a couple of different formations and then drawing the, the piece of silk, or the image of the piece of silk. Um, and I was particularly influenced by Richard Serra's um, talking about 
the way that he drew his sculptures as a way to know them. So looking at drawing not as an, a planning kind of exercise, but as a trying to figure out what you've done. I really liked that um, interpretation of drawing, I guess. And so it's just trying to figure out how the, the silk was sitting and how it moved or um, what, what was going on. And these were a series that went around the whole room, so they kind of fell over and over again. Um, the next, these pieces, uh, I've also been working um, with the idea of mapping and um, looking at mapping as a tool that we use to, to understand or to figure something out. And I'm very interested in things that have this sort of dual control and not control. So you know, we map as a way to kind of break things up and, and define them, but at the same time maps are completely, or not completely, but can be imaginary and they can be um, wrong. And so they have this both kind of discoverability um, and also something we use. And, um, so these are, uh, it's a linen base that has the ash of previous bodies of work embedded in it. And then I have stitched um, scraps and remnants <coughs> and bits and pieces in, in various forms of reference uh, and mapping, mapping technique. Um, then these are scanned as well and printed and made into paper sculptures. So I guess um, the, the reason for doing this is that there's a, a certain scale you can get with the scanning and then it <coughs> on a very large scale that makes the, the very small cloth piece very large and I um, find that quite interesting how that transformation means that it looks like cloth but it doesn't look like cloth and it's paper so it's a little bit confusing. Um, and they become these kind of strange things that you can get like amazing detail with the scanner. Um, and they have, again, this very fragile <coughs> um, <coughs> quality to them there. And they are very fragile. Um, yeah. And the last sort of area that I've been working on is. Um, mapping as the drawn mark rather than the stitching mark. It's very difficult to see, but this is um, covered in pencil marks and it maps out um, an image of a spin wheel. So, one of the objects that I got back from um, the studio was my mum's spinning wheel. And, um, it's become very important in this series because it's it's broken, but it kind of works. Or it could work. I could fix it, but it's sort of become. I've been making it in response to it in, in a different way. So it's no longer spinning yarn. It's the um, the object of drawings. So it's it remains a, a, a tool of creation, but just in kind of way. Um, and I also did a series of new drawings of the spinning wheel. You said that's a spinning wheel? Yeah. How did that sit on a painting last year? Wheels? I have no idea. Is that even that happened? No, no. I think it was just where it was. Um, so this was a two week performance drawing where I did line continuous line drawings of the spinning wheel um, on the walls of the gallery and um, they became these very interesting kind of screwy marks and um, I was thinking about the way that we nest and we build up these layers of, um, of comfort 
it around us and so building this drawing around me on the walls was kind of comforting and the time that you spend just looking at an object over and over again, again and trying to find something different and responding to how tired I was or how sore I was or visitors that came in. Um, and yeah, it was this really quite interesting, nasty experience. Um, and then a slight segue. Um, was this piece that is part of the Tamworth textile training um, that I just well, opened in Tamworth in August. And uh, for this piece, I decided to record my breath for 10 minutes a day for a year. And in a spiral, I've made a spiral piece in with my own work but with red thread. Um, and so this was kind of looking at an extension of that work. And I've been very interested in the negative quality of a lot of stitching or textiles work when, and how I could kind of tease that out a little bit. So I have, I think there's there's three different types of thread in this work um, and yeah basically just stitched for 10 minutes for a day for a year and alongside it I um, documented the work and made an animation of it for me because one thing that I um, also interesting because a lot of my work is very process based. It's how do you open up the process when you just see something that's finished but it's actually about what it meant to make that and kind of put that forward for the audience as well. Um, so this is what it's So alongside the work was this animation um, recording each 10 minutes of stitching. Um, and that's when I went to the for a week. Because <laughs> one thing that I didn't quite think about was how long a year is and how much of your life is recorded in a piece that you work on for that long. And you know, can you see? The weekend away, where I could still work on it, but I couldn't record it, um, and all the little the changes that happen um, day to day. Textiles are so time consuming and that's the beauty of it. Mm -hmm. 